Hello guys and welcome back to our data analysis and finance series and in today's episode we'll dive into the world of Python and explore two powerful libraries Pandas and NumPy. These libraries are essential tool for manipulating and analyzing financial data. So let's embark on this journey together. So the first question that comes in mind is why Python for data analysis? So the Python has emerged as the go-to programming language for data analysis due to its simplicity, versatility, and rich ecosystem of libraries. So when it comes to financial data, Python provides a robust and flexible environment for working with complex data sets. So now let's explore the two fundamental libraries, Pandas and NumPy, and understand how they revolutionize the financial data analysis. The first part is NumPy. So NumPy, a short form of numerical Python, is a powerful library for numerical computing in Python. It provides efficient data structures, functions, and mathematical operations for handling large data sets, large arrays, and matrices. So let's look at some examples of how NumPy can be used in finance. We will discuss about the different, different examples in this Python notebook. Here it is, guys, the uh, use of NumPy in finance. And let's get started with the examples in the week one. So the first thing is gen uh, generating random numbers. So you, you can generate the random numbers by using the NumPy li libraries. Here's a function called random.rand. And that can generate a ran random number for you that how many numbers you want to generate, it can generate for you. And the second thing is reshaping the arrays. Like, uh, uh, let's take an example. Like if you have like many kind of arrays uh, with the different, different shapes and you want all your arrays to be in one specific shape, let us say that shape is two by three. So by using this function, you can change the shape of your arrays into the shape that you desired. And the third thing is computing mean and standard deviation. So the mean and standard deviation is very much useful in the finance domain because mean is just a uh, average out of all your returns or all your stock prices. And the standard deviation says that the fluctuation in the price of the stocks or the returns over the time that shows that how much your uh, uh, new stock or your new return is away from the mean standard deviation is not uh, can be considered as alpha and beta in finance because that is a, like completely another concept that we can uh, discuss in some other video but standard deviation is just a fluctuation that is calculated over the time so the next thing is covariance and correlation so the covariance is always considered from the minus infinity to the plus infinity and again predict how two stocks might relative to each other. So if one stock goes up, the second stock goes up with it or uh, down with it. So if both the stocks are going in the same direction, then it shows the positive covariance. But if both the stocks are going in opposite direction, then it shows the uh, negative co uh, covariance so that is like how you can uh, check that wh whether you can try to uh, compare two two stocks or not and the correlation is just a scaled version of co uh, covariance because uh, covariance can be from the minus infinity to, to plus infinity but correlation can be from the minus one to plus one okay so i just see that i just uh, make a plot of uh, uh, stock returns and the market returns so it just shows that how these two are related to each other. The covariance is in the positive terms. So that means when one stock goes up, the second stock goes up with it. And uh, the correlation is also in the positive direction. It shows that both are in the same direction growing or same direction declining stocks. Okay. So the next thing is simulating the asset return. So that is the like very much uh, uh, useful use case of uh, uh, this NumPy library talk. Like uh, uh, it's mean, it's standard deviation. And I want to simulate that stock for the next 12 months. That how the stocks can grow in the next 12 months. So you can easily uh, simulate it with the, by using the MP random dot normal function. You just have to enter the mean standard deviation and the number of periods you want that just say i want to uh, make it check for the next 12 months so i just put it periods and then i just check it that if the stock price is here then its mean can be shifted in the next 12 months like that 
so it is just a very rough example because when you try it in the real life you need much more information ab about their stock instead of uh, mean and standard deviation okay so the next thing is performing matrix operations like if you have like uh, matrices with you you can uh, apply like different kind of operations like matrix add matrix multiplications like all kind of stuff with that okay and the next thing is present value so that is the most used uh, uh, topic in the finance domain as well because uh, uh, if you have a amount with you and you want to check the pre present value of that uh, uh, amount so let's just say you have the rate, rate of interest is uh, uh, 0 0.06 per uh, percent and you want to get it for the next 10 years and you want to uh, deposit like uh, uh, 200 rupees every month as well and you want to your future value to be around like a uh, 2 lakh so by using this formula you can calculate it very easily I just like uh, divide the rate by 12 to get it into the monthly case and then an NPR into 12 to get it in into the monthly uh, uh, time period and then I just calculate the uh, present value of that amount so it just shows that the present value in, in the uh, negative form because you need that kind of uh, money to go there okay to go to your uh, future value okay so the next thing is a uh, geometric brownian motion it is widely used concept in finance because uh, it uses the uh, your information that you have like initial price drift volatility number of period to just uh, model the simulation of your stock like you want to check for the next 12 months or next next one year or two year then it can simulate those things for you it is it is like a same concept as we see in the above like simulating asset return but it is a much more advanced version for that because it includes the initial price as well drift as well and volatility as well okay so in that way when, when you just uh, put it in a mp dot and random function you can put it like that and then you change that how much price it's changed by using the np dot uh, cumulative uh, prod function that just cumulative over the time as well okay so then it shows that this is how how much it changed over the time so uh, let's just say it starts with the price of 100 and it goes to the around like 102 its maximum price reaches up to like 105 or 106 something like that okay so that's how you can like uh, simulate a stock price of a, a stock okay so the next thing we can calculate is value at risk so the value at risk is a year of the risk of the loss of investment it estimates that how much a set of investments might lose given a normal market conditions in a set of p period of time like we can set a period of time like be one day or one year or or just like uh, one month as well okay so it just give you the value at risk like uh, how much amount is your at uh, risk in a given period of time okay so let's just say i choose the confidence level of 0 0.05 that is around 95 percent of confidence level okay and then my initial investment is of uh, 2000 rupees and my mean is also 2000 and my standard deviation is 10 so that means my uh, stock prices can move up and down by 10 okay and then i just uh, calculate the cutoff here and then cal calculate the variability that uh, how much that it just shows me that this much of your amount is at risk in the uh, very first day okay so when i just calculate it for the next 15 days by using the same thing then it just show me that your 16.44 dollars are at risk in the one day period and when you just go to the uh, day by day by day by thing then it shows that at the end of the 15 day your 63.7 dollars are at the risk period okay that you just show the graph here that your amount at risk is getting increases day by day if uh, like the conditions are same over that period of time okay but that's not the case in the real life as well in the real life your con conditions can be uh, changed uh, within a within a minute or within a 
hour or within a day as well so uh, according to that your this graph can be uh, very much uh, fluctuating as well okay so the next thing is exponential moving average so so you want to know that uh, how much your stock price move on average on the basis of your investments so okay so the ex exponential moving average is just a technical chart indicator that tracks the price of an investment over the period of time okay so like uh, like say i have this kind of a, a price series i have like these 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 are the price of different different stocks i want to know know that in the period of 3 uh, months that uh, how the stocks price move okay so for that thing i just uh, cal calculate the weights and then uh, just check check for the uh, sum of the weights by dividing to get the average of the weights and then put it into this function np dot convol and then it just give me that in the period of 3 months it just move like this like my 100 dollar stock will become 101 105 will become 102 102 will become 100 and 98 become 99 like in that it just uh, moves around okay and the next thing is uh, value investment strategy so if you want to know know that like uh, what kind of stocks you want to buy what kind of stocks you want to uh, reject or uh, not not buy as well so you can do it like this that you know know that the price of st stocks are this and uh, book value of that stock how is this so if you want to know that what are the uh, undervalued stocks that you want to buy so, so that you know that these stock prices can increase in the in the future as well. you can you can do it by using this logic that i just put here i just first get the ratio as well and then whose ratio are like less than one i just select those stocks okay okay so like as you just see that we just uh, discuss like some of the examples of numpy in finance here so in our next video we'll discuss about the uh, pandas use cases as well as you just see that uh, here are like pandas use cases are there so in the next video we'll just discuss about how pandas are used in finance with its examples and in our future videos we can also discuss some advanced concept as well like uh, uh, monte carlo a uh, simulation or black hole simulation all this all this kind of stuff we can uh, discuss in our future videos thank you guys thank you so much